Thank you. There's been a, quite a change of mood, I think, uh, this afternoon. We spent the morning hearing about the promise of technology. And this afternoon, started by a very nice polemic talk, we've started to worry about how politics and society can keep up with that. And my talk fits right into that. The story, though, starts when I was a little boy. Back then, I think the future looked a lot more optimistic. This was before global warming, the global financial crisis, the threat of global pandemics, and then what we're seeing today, this new problem that faces the world, the global refugee crisis. This is me back then with my twin brother and my sister. We're watching a, a classic British TV program. Doctor Who. Who knows Doctor Who? Good. My twin brother's the one sitting down. He's watching it through his fingers because it can get pretty scary when you're five years old watching Doctor Who. I'm the one standing up. But if you look, I'm trying to be a bit blasé, but, but I'm not that blasé. If you look at my legs, I'm about to duck behind the sofa as soon as it gets, <laughs> so as soon as it gets any more troubling. Now, if you don't know Doctor Who, don't worry. It's a great program. I recommend you go and watch it. Um, I'm sure it's on YouTube. But one of the arch enemies that the Doctor faced were the Daleks. Uh, here's one of the Daleks. They were part alien, part robot. And um, they were really intent on taking over the universe. And they were doing that by killing everyone who wasn't a Dalek. And their favorite catchphrase, well, that was exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. Now, fortunately for us, the Daleks weren't the match for the Doctor Who. He was rather an eccentric Englishman. He somehow managed to beat the Daleks every time with nothing more than his sonic screwdriver. Now, when I was preparing this talk, my daughter, who's about the age I was in that picture, she uh, said, oh, don't worry, Daddy. And she went off and, and drew a picture, which I'm going to share with you, which explains why we don't have to worry. Now, the Daleks ran on wheels. And that meant it would just take a single step to stop their plans to take over the universe. <laughs> sort of to misquote Neil Armstrong, the, the first guy to walk on the moon, that's one small step for mankind. <laughs> anyway, back to me, uh, age five. This is when I started to dream about robots, about building robots. And perhaps because I didn't have any great imagination, that's actually what I've spent my life doing. I've been working in the field of artificial intelligence, trying to make computers more intelligent and put the brains into those robots. Now, 2015 is, I can assure you, a great time to be working in AI. We're making real progress. Uh, and a month ago, a team from my university, the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia, just won the World Cup in robot soccer. Here are the cute little robots that they play with. I'm sorry to tell you, we beat a German team in the final. 3-1. <laughs> in fact, don't worry, though. Germany's always in the final, so you know, it's, it's a matter of whether you can beat Germany or not, whether you win. In fact, uh, here's, here's the German team. They come from Bremen, um, and therefore they call themselves Be Human, which I think proves that Germans do have a sense of humor. But uh, no, seriously, um, we're making lots of progress in, in AI. Um, companies are spending hundreds of millions of dollars on uh, buying startups. Uh, Google just spent 500 million pounds on DeepMind, uh, an AI startup. Uh, and if you want to see for yourself, um, just open an app on your smartphone like Siri or Cortana and ask a question. And you can see we're making really great progress. But whilst myself and my colleagues have been dreaming about how we're going to be healthier, wealthier, uh, and happier because of the, all this great technology, 
the future's been getting a lot scarier. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, AI is, is seen by many to be part of that scary future. Now, this is when I flash up the picture of Terminator. Because every time I talk to the media about the sort of thing we're trying to do, they put up a picture of Terminator. Now, I'm not going to talk to you today about Terminator. That's probably the subject of a TED talk in about ooh, 50 years' time, when some of the technologies that we'll need to be able to build something of the capability of Terminator will have been invented. Now, I want to talk about technologies that are actually much nearer, uh, only at best a few years away. In fact, I want to talk to you about stupid AI, the sort that's going to kill you in the near future. Which is why a month ago, I helped put together a letter, an open letter, that was signed by over 1,000 of my colleagues working in AI and robotics, um, and was released at the main AI conference held in Buenos Aires in Argentina, um, calling upon the United Nations to ban offensive autonomous weapons, or, as the media like to call them, killer robots. Now, that 1,000 grew to 2,000 signatures by the end of that very first day. Now, just think about that for a second. That's several thousand people who arguably understand this technology the best, who are asking the diplomats to get their act together and put a ban in place. To give you some context to this, uh, the United Nations has been having some ongoing discussions in Geneva, looking at whether they should start the process to have a, have a ban. But, um, well, how do I put this diplomatically? The talks are progressing very slowly. Today, over 20,000 people have now signed that letter. The signatures include many leading researchers in the area of artificial intelligence and robotics. And they also include many other well-known names, uh, names like the physicist uh, Stephen Hawkins, the technologist Elon Musk, um, the uh, political activist and linguist Noam Chomsky, and many other household names. Now, what do we mean by an offensive autonomous weapon? This up here is a, a predator drone. It's uh, in action in places like Afghanistan and Iraq. This is not an autonomous weapon. There's a soldier back in a uh, container in Nevada who's actually flying this thing and making those life or death decisions as whether to, to fire the Hellfire missile um, and take out people on the ground. But it would take very little to take a human out of the loop and replace that human by a computer and have the weapon system controlled entirely by a computer. In fact, the UK's Ministry of Defense have said this is pretty much technically feasible today. And of course, the military are really keen to, to do something like this, because whilst this is controlled by radio signals, it's, it can be, uh, it can be uh, hijacked, it can be jammed. Uh, it wouldn't be as, uh, such a good weapon system. Now, I would have thought banning killer robots was a no-brainer. Who wants killer robots? Why wouldn't you want to ban them? But interestingly, there were a remarkable number of objections raised to our letter. Uh, and I just want to go through five of the most common objections that were raised, because it, it will inform you this is not a completely black or white issue, but I think you'll come to the same conclusion that I've come to, which is that we really should think about having a ban and encouraging our politicians to put one in place. So the first objection is that robots will be better at killing. Actually, I thought that was a reason why we want to ban them. But that's a, a little too simple. Robots will be better at killing, and we don't have to get to Terminator to do that. Think of swarms of, of quadcopters 
that, uh, as the Washington Post described it, hunt in packs like wolves. It's a frightening thought. They'll be more efficient at killing. And, and the history of warfare is largely about technology being developed to improve the efficiency of killing, and typically that's been a bad thing for mankind. And you've got to remember that whilst we may have a technical edge today, every time you put a weapon into the battlefield, you have to expect very shortly the other side will get their hands on it, and it will be used against you. And worse than that, it's going to fall into the hands of terrorists, rogue nations, and other people. And ultimately, this is going to end up in an arms race. Uh, and we'll be on the receiving end of that arms race. So the second objection you hear is that robots will be more ethical at killing, more likely to follow the rules of law, uh, more likely to s distinguish between civilian and combatant. Well, let me tell you, that's just simply naive. We don't know how to build today an ethical robot. And as for separating apart civilian from combatant, well, I'm afraid the complex computer vision systems that we would need to do that are decades away from being invented. Um, and you also have to remember, there isn't a single computer system out there that can't be hacked. And terrorists and other people will hack these systems and make them behave in undesirable ways. So the third objection is that, well, it's great. We can take humans out of the battle. We can put robots in there. Robots can fight robots. Well, again, that's rather naive. There isn't this separate part of the world called the battlefield. Signpost over here. Battles over here, please. <laughs> Battles are fought in towns and cities where we live. And we're seeing that today with all these refugees coming to Europe. Wars are really asymmetric. And the terrorists and the other underdogs that we're typically fighting, they're not going to sign up to just fighting our robots against their robots. The fourth objection I often hear is that, well, these weapon systems already exist, and actually we need them to defend ourselves. This is the, the Phalanx anti-missile gun. It's an autonomous weapon. It protects against, against incoming uh, missiles. It has, because of the need to react in sub-second times, it's entirely autonomous. I've got nothing against such a weapon system. It's defensive, not offensive. And the fact that a weapon system exists doesn't mean you can't ban it. We've successfully banned several weapon systems that existed. The sixth and final objection I've heard is that weapon bans just don't work. Well, history contradicts this. There are a number of successful weapon bans that exist. The 1998 UN protocol on blinding lasers has resulted in the fact that blinding lasers are not being used today. If you go to the battlefields of Syria, you don't find blinding lasers being used. And not a single arms company anywhere in the world will sell you a blinding laser. Similarly, the 1997 Ottawa uh, Convention on Anti-Personnel Mines has resulted in 40 million anti-personnel mines being destroyed. In each case, we can't uninvent the technology. That's not possible. It's technology that we want. It's the same technology that's going to go into our autonomous cars that's going to make our roads much safer. But we can associate enough stigma with the weapon system so that arms companies won't sell it, so that there isn't an arms race, and so that it doesn't fall into the hands of terrorists and other rogue nations. And even a ban that was only partially effective, I think, would be something worth having. So I hope I've convinced you it's not this guy, the Terminator, that we need to worry about. But much simpler technologies, they're actually almost with us today. Uh, and so therefore, we need to worry about getting a ban now, before there's an arms race, and before it falls into the arms of the wrong people. If I had more time, I'd try and be a bit more upbeat and tell you about all the great things that AI and robotics are going to do. We heard lots of those this morning, about taking away the drudgery in our work, about looking after our sick, 
educating our children, and all the other things that you've, we heard about this morning. But I just want to end by inviting you to sign our letter. You can find it at tinyurl.com slash AW letter. That's for autonomous weapon letter. You might also like to think about joining one of the organizations like the Campaign to Stop Killer Robots that is uh, fighting for this issue. And please join me in, in making the world a less scary place for all five-year-olds. Dankeschön.